Okay, so hello everyone. This is Get Organized, Digital Files for Students. This is really about if you have a lot of stuff that you need to keep track of. I'm talking about actual papers, forms, digital deadlines, uh, emails, everything that you are in the midst of every day, you need to have a way to get organized and make it easier for you to get through and find all of your stuff. So what does it mean to be organized? It means your information is findable. Your applications for college, if they're in a, just a jumble on your desk, it's not helpful to you. You can't find anything. Your information is findable. Um, so if you have a, a big pile of applications on your desk, that's not gonna be helpful for you or your guidance counselor or your future prospects in whatever college you end up going to. So we need to take the mess and make it navigable, which means that you can put things in, in one place and if you forget where they are, you can make your way back to them. Some questions to ask yourself when coming up with a uh, organizational plan or strategy. You need to think about who needs the information, why do they need it, what kind of information it is, and where is it and how do they get it. So you can make that applicable to yourself. So who needs the information? Me. Why do I need it? You can think about, do I need it for school? Do I need it to apply to college? Do I need it to apply to a job? Do I need it to uh, write scholarships? What kind of information is it? Are you talking about your multiple drafts of your app college application essay? Are you thinking about um, math worksheets in a binder somewhere? Or you have to know what it is so you know how to classify it. And then where is it and how do you get it? Um, that's the real crux of the, of the question, right? Uh, I have found in my college classes, I go back to the information page on the um, class website to download the syllabus. And when I download it, I've realized that I have downloaded it 12 times in one semester. That's no good. You want to download everything that you need once and put it in a place where you know where it is so you don't have to go off in a frenzy looking for everything again. This can apply to school, this can apply to your life, this can apply to your college application process. And the how do you get it part is important as well in that you need to think about how can you access it. Is it in the cloud? Do you need internet access? If you're meeting with your guidance counselor about a college application, and your draft is in your Google Drive, and then the internet cuts out, what are you going to do with your one guidance counselor session? Do you know what I mean? It's, you need to have a way to get to the information as well. If you are in the library and you need to access your common application so that you can upload items that you need and then you realize that you took the wrong flash drive, how how are you going to remedy that situation? So we are going to go to the next slide. Now, these are all methods or non-methods of organization. Um, you encounter it every day in a bunch of different ways. So you have, you know, your Netflix, they organize by genre or new releases or Re, um, recently added, stuff like that. This uh, down here with the books, this is the Library of Congress classification system. If you don't know what that is, it might look like gibberish. So not accessible to everyone. Netflix's system, accessible to everyone, but might be a little bit confusing. You might have something in Action Adventure that's also a new release. When you go to look for it, are you going to look at new releases or action and adventure? Is it a bit harder to keep track of multiple things and across multiple genres? That's up to you. This was my downloads folder from like a couple months ago. You can see here that 
despite there being not very much organization at all, there is a sense of organization in that anytime I downloaded something and indeed when you download files to your computer, it goes to this downloads folder. Whether you take it out and then continue to organize it on your computer is up to you. Um, also, you can see the names don't really mean very much of anything. It's mostly copies of different things all over and over and over again. And then even your messages, those are organized in a particular way by the person that you are messaging. This I just pulled from uh, Google Photos. This is not anybody that I know, but um, with this, it used to be in a time before iMessage, wait, when I got my first cell phone, messages kit just came in and were not grouped by anything. They just stacked one on top of the other. So there was no real conversation so much as just <clears throat> message on message on message. So obviously by person is a very effective way to organize your messages. So we're going to the next slide. What kind of documents are you handling every day? So in your academic life or in your college search process, you have to think about what documents um, and items that you are interacting with in every situation. So if it's for school, you want to think about essays, you want to think about homework, you want to think about um, slides from slideshows from your teachers, you want to think about videos if they're sending you or you're recording different um, tutorials. If it's college application process, you want to think about your FAFSA, you want to think about your applications, you want to think about Common App, you want to think about individual applications. You want to think about the essay. You want to think about supplemental essays. You want to think about recommendations. You want to keep it all in the back of your head. But every day it could be more than just Word documents. It could be your texts and iMessages. It could be photos, you know, books on your shelf, your apps. How do you organize the app? Your, apps on your phone, you know, how do you organize your emails, PDFs, videos, anything, all of that, any sort of item that you interact with digitally or physically can be organized in some way to make it easier for you to find again later. So the next thing you want to think about are where are your documents now? Now that you know that you what you have, you have to think about where are they? Are they in a mess on your desktop? Are they um, like on your computer or your devices? Are, are all of your files saved to your PC? Are they saved to your home computer? Are they saved to a classroom computer? Obviously classroom computer not really happening right now, um, but are they saved to a particular location, a local hard drive somewhere? Are they saved to the cloud? Do you have access to cloud storage? Do you need internet to access it? Have you downloaded it or saved it for offline viewing? Or are these all physical files? Are they, and by physical files, I mean papers. Is it in smushed at the bottom of your backpack? Is it in binders? Is it in your car? Is it in your locker? Um, knowing where you have stuff to organize and going there is the first step in this process. Um, and then what does it look like when you find it? Are important digital files in the downloads folder on your computer like we were looking at before? Um, this was a different point that I screenshot in my downloads folder. This tells you nothing. I don't know what was downloaded. I know that these are some Word documents, these are some PDFs, and at the top are some photos. I only know that because of the file type. I don't know what's in them. I don't know why I downloaded them when I did, or where they came from, or where they should go. Um, so this is an example of a not organized depository. So are important digital files in the downloads file on your computer, or do you have duplicates? As you can see here, 
master one, master two, master three, when you have a file that's been downloaded like that and they're in um, parentheses, it means you've already downloaded it before. If you've downloaded it before and in the parentheses, the number is how many times you've downloaded it before. Where is it now? Why did you keep downloading again and again? Um, do you have important stuff in here? How would you know? You can't know from these file names or this location because it all just looks the same. And it's all just physical copies stuffed in an accordion folder on your desk. That's also something, like we said before, it could be anywhere, physical copies, if you have papers like that. Um, so why should you get organized? So that you can find your stuff is the most important thing. Um, like the example I had at the top where I had syllabi where I would have to re I would have to go back to the class website again and again and again to re-download to check a deadline. You're losing precious time and especially at this point in the state of the world, it can derail your entire thought process and work ethic to have to go and find a particular paper amidst all your other papers and you're just spending time that you could have been spending on your actual work. You should also get organized because then you don't have to remember where you put it. If you are, if you follow some of these strategies, you can puzzle out even if you don't know where you actually put it, you can puzzle it out so that you can take a best guess and it'll shave down the time finding and re-downloading and re evaluating all of your stuff. Um, and you won't find, waste time finding or redoing forms or worksheets. Redoing is also the big thing here as well, especially in the college application process. If you have a FAFSA and you started, and you download it and you started filling it out on your computer and you save it, and you save it, I don't know, somewhere on your desktop in a folder that doesn't have any sort of identifier mark on it and you come back a month later and you go to look for it, it's going to be hard to find it. And then you might have to do all that work all over again. Who wants to do that? It's a pain in the butt. We're going to get organized. I'm going to show you some strategies how to keep track of your stuff. And then one of the last things to remember before we get into strategies themselves, who's important to your files? The answer is you. So you can take any of these strategies, all of them, none of them, you have to think about what you need, what your goals are, and what you want to make your digital home space look like. Um, so a lot of these can be, these strategies can be um, retrofitted to like what, um, what is important to you and your academic and um, professional goals essentially. So these are the three strategies we're gonna go over. Um, once we go over them, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna say, that was pretty straightforward and nothing revelatory, but I am not wrong in saying that a lot of people think that these are obvious, but then they also don't do them. So if you have a plan for them, um, you're more likely to do them. Uh, and then once you start implementing these strategies, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it becomes more of a second, second nature to keep doing them. So you keep everything nice and neat and findable on your computer or in the cloud or wherever. So we have folder structure, we have file naming, we have duplication. First strategy is folder structure. <clears throat> so when I say folder structure, um, I mean, folders on your computer. That's really all that I am talking about. So the folders can be um, the small folders. Do I have a picture of them? No, of course not. Um, that sit on your desktop. You can have that come up in File Explorer. If you're looking at, say, Google Drive, you can make folders um, that nest underneath each other or sit alongside each other. 
Um, or you can even just have your physical folders in your backpack. It's all three are useful in their own ways. Um, but if you just have a folder here that says etc, if you have a folder here that says miscellaneous, if you have a folder here that just says English or literature or history, it might not really be helpful depending on what you are doing in your um, in your own life. If you have a folder that just says college, is that helpful to you in your college application um, process? If you have a folder that says college and inside is just a mishmash of 800 downloaded files from different colleges or from the Common App, is that going to help you had it been just in your downloads folder? Might be a little bit faster, but not that much at all. So what you want to think about is creating a folder structure. So what we're going to do, the process for this is, um, number one, you want to take an inventory. What do you have? So let's say you're trying to isolate all of your college application um, downloads from your download folder. First, it's going to be annoying, but you have to open every single item. Or if you know from the file name already what it is, figure out where you want to put it. So you already have a folder system in place or um, how much stuff do you have? So if you only have a couple of items, like let's say that the FAFSA form and a note from your guidance counselor, you can just have a college folder and it would just be those two items in there, that's fine. Um, but like we said before, if there's dozens of files that have nondescript names on them, then you maybe want to have different folders within the structure. So for, for me personally, I would think that if you have a college folder, um, you would click into that folder and then you'd have other folders. So you can have drafts for college essay as one, financial aid documents as two, scholarships as the third folder. Um, fourth folder can be applications that are not common apps, stuff like that. So you need to think about what you are accumulating in this process. The second thing you have to do is sort. So are any of the categories presenting themselves naturally? naturally? So like I said, if you have a bunch of FAFSA forms, it makes a lot of sense to have a folder that's just about FAFSA, throw them in there. How are you determining what item goes where? How does this document relate to the others? So if you have something like a scholarship essay, are you putting it in with financial aid or are you making a new folder about scholarships? It makes sense to have it in financial aid, but if you are applying to like 20 different scholarships, it might behoove you to separate them out. Um, and then how are you deciding to sort each document into each category? You gotta think at the outset and then apply all of the same parameters that you are applying to the organization of one document to the rest of your documents. If you have similar documents and they end up in different places, you have to stop and think, how did they end up in those different places? Does it make sense? Or do you have to review how you are addressing each document and then reapply the new standards so that they both end up in the same place? The third is subdivide. How can you break out the categories further? Can you go into things by year? Can you go into things by different schools? Are you keeping the subdivisions uniform across, across verticals? And when I say a vertical, I mean the, if you open up the folder structure, so you have college at the top, and let's say financial aid, and then you have 2020-21, and then 2021-2022. If you break out college, applications. Do you also have 2021, 2022 and those verticals? That's what I mean when it comes, when it, it's like the nesting doll, that's a vertical. Um, you don't have to keep the same subdivisions uniform. They can be different under each uh, topic or a different folder, but um, if it has similar items within the folders, it would be I think it would behoove you to keep things uniform so that you know where things are um, if you're separating out by date 
Um, and there's also, are you doing too many folders? Are you going to, are you over organizing so that you have to click and click and click and get to the end and there's one thing in one folder? Um, that's something to keep in mind. The second strategy is file naming. Um, what does file naming mean? It just means the name of every file. So you want to figure out the why. So which aspect of each file is most important to you? So what, when you remember what a file is, what is it that's coming to mind? Um, so if we're talking about college applications, um, if you're looking for your Common App essay, what comes to mind? Is it the fact that it's the Common App essay? Is it the topic of your essay? Is it the date, the draft number, whatever? You have to think about what aspect of it is the most important. Um, and do you know the similar info for all of your files? So now you want to make a structure. This is something for yourself. Um, you don't have to amend it to anything else, but um, you don't want all of your files to live forever as document one, parentheses, 42, 43, 44, and so on forever, because that does not tell you what is in them. The file names tell you at a glance what's in the file. Um, usually uh, in professional practices, it'll have a couple distinct parts separated by underscores. You don't want spaces. Um, just in case you have to move your files to a different server, a different platform, um, sometimes the spaces kind of mess up the saving, it messes up the saving of the file. So I would always keep underscores if you are trying to separate different parts of the file name. Um, and when we think back to the why, like if you want to organize by your school subjects, so for example, like chemistry, um, you have chemistry, under, you want to put that at the top of the file name. Or like if you're thinking about, you know, your folder structure and it's already in a folder named chemistry, you can have the date first, like 10, 14, 20 underscore chemistry and it's in your 2020 folder in your over, overarching chemistry folder if you take chemistry more than one year. Um, and if you have dates, I always recommend to put the date in the file itself. Um, they should be in the same spot in every file. So it could be right at the top or right at the end. And you should always have the same um, structure on that. So it should be like two numerals each for month, day, year, or you know, you can have your month and your year or just a month and a date, but keep that in mind and always do the same across the board. So for ex I have a few examples here. So you can think in your mind, you have your class name, a unit, an assignment number, and a date. And then it would look, if you look on the second, um, the second line here, you have biology, underscore unit three, underscore assignment four, whoop, underscore 10, 14, 20. That's a great file name because it tells you what it is. And every assignment that you get in biology you can adjust it so that you know what you're looking at. If you have a college app and you are thinking about, you know, supplementals, you can have your name, the college name, what it is, which draft number it is, and the date, stuff like that. You want to make it seem professional, but also like you want to know what's in it so you don't have to open every single item each time. And then just keep it uniform across all different um, all your different files um, so that if you forget something and then you can't also maneuver it with your folder structure, you can search in your file explorer or you can search in your Google Drive um, and you'll be able to find it by thinking like, okay, I don't know what, where it is, but if I saved it, like I save everything else and it's like an English essay or something, you can search English underscore I don't know, midterm underscore Dickens underscore whatever date that it was, it should come up. And the last strategy is duplication. Um, and by duplication, I mean having a lot of copies of stuff. There is a 
um, acronym in the archiving community, which is also, I'm also an archivist, called LOCKS, which is lots of copies keep stuff safe. Um, so when you're thinking about duplication, you want to think about the worst case scenario. Um, so if you have all of your application materials on your personal laptop and then you spill a drink on it or your cat spills a drink on it in the hard drive shop, what are you going to do? Is it somewhere else? Is it on a thumb drive? Do you know where that thumb drive is? Um, and if you draft everything on paper and you lose 10 pages of it, what are you going to do? If you have a meeting with your guidance counselor and all your materials are on Google Drive and but her office is like in the deep part of a building and it's there's no internet back there and you only have the one meeting with her for like the whole month of October and you spend half of it trying to connect to the internet that's not a good use of your time so you want to plan for that scenario so you want a strategy to select and then implement the duplication plan so what items are important to have access to at all times um, if it's just the latest draft of an item, that's fine. If you want access to every single item across every single folder and file, that's also your prerogative. Um, usually in this instance, you'll take, you'll have a set of files on your computer itself, on the hard drive, a local copy. And then what I like to do is I like to replicate the folder and naming, the folder structure and naming conventions in the cloud. So I use Google Drive. I find that that's the easiest way to um, have a suite of applications that kind of work together. And then I also save it to my computer. And then if I want to be extra careful, I put everything on a thumb drive. Um, and if I need to talk to someone else about a particular text file or application or something, I will print it out and bring it with me because I don't trust um, the internet or my phone. You always want to have a backup um, and you want to make sure that the, the organization structure on one mirrors the other. So on my computer, the setup for the folders is the exact same as it is in my Google Drive. So if I need to find something on my Google Drive, I'm looking in the same place that I would look um, on my computer and vice versa. And then the last thing is, like I was saying before, consider some application integration. I use Google Drive and Google Suite. I'm not chilling for them. It's just the easiest and it is free, um, especially with the college application season. It is really effective because you can use the calendar and all of the Google Drive. You can use Docs, Sheets, Slides. They have tasks so that you can sync up with your calendar and then check them off as you go. That's in the checklist. You can have notes. Um, and they all work together to create a seamless environment to keep track of all of your stuff and your dates of things due and integrate it together. So 